This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to The 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this, despite the fact that he doesn't look like he normally looks, <laughs> is my husband, Joe. Hello. 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 And you really, I really thoroughly recommend that if you're listening to the audio version of this, you hop over to YouTube and have a look at the video version of it because Joe he begged me for a week not to bleach his hair true. and then dye it a funny colour. So at the moment, he is sporting a really fine ginger nut. I have gone extraordinarily ginger. It's great. I love a ginger. I'm not sure I begged you for a week. You I don't did. Think that's quite what happened. That's exactly what happened. I just, I just figured that, you know, with the whole corona crisis and all that nonsense that sooner or later i'm going to go back to you know buzz cutting my own head and if i'm going to do that now's the time to experiment with you know ridiculous hair colors because i don't have to be an adult at the moment i don't have to go anywhere i don't have to see anybody speaking of not being an adult at the moment um we'll come to the quarantine chronicles in a moment because so many things have happened and joe's ginger hair is only the first of the coronavirus uh, the corona apocalypse crisis things that have happened in uh, at Casa Dingle. So has a lot happened? Well, we'll come to that, Joe. Okay. <laughs> um but yeah, this is this is this podcast. This is podcast 209 by the way. Cheapest. I know. Um this podcast is all about greed because we're still doing the, te- the seven deadly sins. We've not done the seven deadly sins yet. No, we've got one more after this. Really? Yeah. Then no, we're done. And then is there a conclusion and a wrap up? Or is is the seventh one it? Oh, we could do a conclusion and a wrap up, couldn't we? Yeah, we'll do that. That's a really good idea, Joe. And then people can just like listen to the conclusion wrap up summary rather than the seven. (laughs) (gasps) So the cliff notes on the last seven podcasts. How I am hurt. Okay. (laughs) And then there's I've got another series planned after that. Really? Yeah. Are you going to tell us? Not now. Okay. You're going to have to tune in next week to find out. Or maybe even the week after. Usually that means up. she hasn't actually got a plan. I have got, I've got a plan. How dare you? Anyway, what are we reading? Joe? what are you reading at the moment? Oh, God. I'm, I'm, yeah. Actually, what are we drinking? We're drinking rhubarb gin and tonic. So I'm going to have a sip while Joe tells you what he's reading. Well, regular listeners might be surprised to hear that I am reading uh, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, which appears to be a never-ending cycle of fantasy books. Uh-huh. I think I'm on book nine... Maybe 10. I don't know. They just, I mean, I'm not reading one on a Kindle, so they all just kind of blur into one. We'll get to the year 2035. We'll still be in quarantine, and Joe will still be reading The Wheel of Time. The thing. If anybody, if any of our dear listeners out there have read the entirety of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, do let me know. Yeah, I actually do. And um, I'd like to know that it finishes at some point. And whether it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I, on the other hand, um, and re- fiction-wise, I'm reading The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Now, Erin Morgenstern also wrote The Night Circus, which I read a few years ago and loved. And The Starless Sea is her latest book, and I love it so much that I'm deliberately reading it slowly because I don't want it to end. Oh. Oh, I love it so much. It's just fabulous. Um, it's like a story within a story within a story, and it's just it's almost, it's like a love letter to books and stories. Nice. I love it. I love it so much. Um, and non-fiction, I'm still reading Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson, um, which I wasn't reading. The first 17 pages or so did not grab me. And then we did the Bookaholics group call. And two people on the call, uh, Louise, hi Louise, and Yinka, hi, Louise. hi Yinka. Hey Yinka. Um, both extolled its virtues and made me want to read on. And so I am reading on and it is getting better. But that just slight tangent, super important that like the first 20 pages or so, needs to not bore you mm. of your book because otherwise people will put it down. They, they really will. Cause it, it bounce off. Yeah, because you get, but like Joe is like so invested in the wheel of time now that he's probably never going to stop reading it. <laughs> um, but if the first, like if the first book had been total crap, would you still be reading it? No. No, of course you wouldn't. And so that was really, really important. And it's it's important that the, the book then gets better and better. So you can't just have a good 20, 21st pages and then make the rest of it crap. It's like, um, but it's really important that the first pages grab you because the only reason that I'm continuing to read Surrounded by Idiots is, is and it's not even that it was bad first 20 pages. I just was like, I have got a lot of things to do and 
Do you know what I mean? And this hasn't grabbed me. This is falling down my list of things I want to do. Exactly. And so, and I'm really looking forward to the next book on the bookaholics list as well. Um, so I was like, oh, I could just not read it. And the only reason I'm still reading it is because two of my friends told me that actually it's, it's worth it. Which so, normally isn't going to happen. Which normally isn't going to happen. Normally you just happen, read a few yeah. pages and go... Pff. Exactly. So that is a, a little bonus lesson within... Um, within this podcast um anyway so the quarantine chronicles i know that everybody will be on the edge of their seats um i'm very concerned about my eyebrows they are beginning to get unruly and that as as my friend susie gray hi susie who i interviewed today for the podcast actually, hi, susie. um as she described her eyebrows as unruly beasts rampaging across her forehead and then i saw her today and her eyebrows looked amazing hmm. so i'm also worried about my fringe if you're watching this you can see that my fringe is getting a bit Mm. A bit in my face. So I asked my hairdresser for... Hi, May. Hi, May. A fringe tutorial, which she duly sent to me, and I pinged her some money. I don't even know if she's noticed that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yes, yeah, so I'm going to cut my own fringe. And that leads me on to what we've been doing during lockdown. And thing the first, and probably the most dramatic, is bleaching Joe's hair. And we were going to dye it, like, lime green or bright orange. Um, we've got to go bright orange for Beaker. Bright orange for Beaker, maybe. Because Joe actually does look like Beaker. Do your Beaker face. See, he looks like Beaker, <laughs> which is amazing. So we're going to dye his hair bright orange, and then next time we're going to dye it, dye it purple. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I dyed my, well, actually, you dyed my hair. I dyed your hair blue. And it looks great. You did such a good job. I'm really pleased with it. I was terrified. Oh, it looks fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with it. Okay. Thank you. Good. So that was cool. Um, but we're not bleaching my hair because... That's that's a bit serious, isn't it? That's a bit serious. I'm just going to have to wait until. I mean, I can but go my hair, there's there's like zero risk because you I can, can just, just buzz I, it off. I can just set my clippers to one and just buzz it all off. Plus, your hair is like super thick and super healthy, yeah. and my hair, while it's really healthy, is very very fine. And if I ever bleach it, it will literally disintegrate. So mm. there's no way I'm doing that. Um, anyway, so what else have we been up to? We have been. I have. Me and Bronson have finally reached a, an agreement. Bronson is the biggest tiny sheep. Mm -hmm. who thought he was in charge and kept trying to nut me. And I've discovered that actually all I have to do is advance on him. Don't go, don't give him space to start the charge. Yeah, don't give him... As soon as he backs up, I advance on him and now we have an understanding and now he's like, hi, I love you again. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So that's good. That's good tactics for, good for tactics. battling tiny sheep. Do not yeah. give him space to start the charge. Um, Joe's So Joe's first corona crisis was the hair mm -hmm. and his second corona crisis was that i came i came into the house the other day to find him wielding a funny shaped package out of which he produced a ukulele would you like to explain that i i don't really know what happened but uh, i kind of felt like i was spending a lot of time noodling around on my phone and i thought never learned any musical instruments and I thought a recorder would be just horrific. Oh, uh, that would end in divorce or possibly yeah. murder. And also, you know, just basically awful things at the best of times, aren't they? Um, and I thought uh, a ukulele would do it. So I bought a ukulele. And I walked in and he was like... cost very much. And he was like, oh, can you teach me to play the ukulele? And I was like, dude, I'm totally shit at the guitar and the ukulele's got only four strings and just no. And all the strings were in the wrong order. So I'm going through like free ukulele tutorials. And he's already better than I am. And I'm furious. I'm <laughs> fucking furious about it. <laughs> I'm not. I've got about... The, well, the thing with ukuleles is, A, they've only got four strings. B, there is very little skill required. And C... I'm making like a... Don't... You no, literally honestly, just insulted every single ukulele player who's any good. I'm, I'm sure there's like... Oh my god! And skills involved in you know advanced ukulele playing. Oh my god! But at the start, it seems like you need about five chords, and you can just kind of strum. And as long as you know, you'll sound like an idiot on a beach in Hawaii. It's fine. It's it's honestly not a technical instrument, as far as I can tell. I don't know. So in six weeks or so, you can expect me and Joe to regale you with a mm. duet in which Joe will play the ukulele badly, and I will play the guitar badly, and. It would be, be great. great. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly resisting the urge. What's what's that song that you keep practicing? Nothing else matters Nothing else by Metallica. Matters. If Metallica. you start playing that, I will... I'm we, really we are resist, done. I'm really resisting the urge <laughs> to find a ukulele tutorial for Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Divorce is really expensive and <laughs> utterly impractical right now because we're not allowed to leave. They are. So, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm staying away from that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we've been doing that. Other things we've been doing is I managed to get hold of yeast, after which everybody was like, how many organs did you have to sell to get that? And I was like, I just ordered it on Amazon, dude. So we've now got a fridge full of yeast. 
So we need to, and then you baked bread, which we could actually knock out a burglar with. It was serious. And I'm not like, I'm not being mean. It was, the bread is amazing. And it was Joe's very first. Great, yeah. It was, it was my first ever bread and it's, it was pretty sturdy. We've, and I, we've eaten I was, it all now. Yeah, we have. I was supposed to be helping you make the bread, but I had a bit of a meltdown yesterday, which I'll come to in a minute. And um, we're just like, just I can't like, deal with the fucking bread or the yeast. You just like noped out of the kitchen <laughs> in a bit of a laugh. It was like, what? Noped out the kitchen. And I'll explain why in a moment. And uh, we also discovered a thing called Snapcam, and we had 10 minutes of absolute hilarity with googly eyes. Yes. So this is um, that a was, filter, isn't that, it? That was. That was that was a by, week ago. by reason of somebody uh, discovering uh, on, on Facebook. <laughs> they turned themselves into a potato and couldn't turn themselves back again. <laughs> yeah, so it was like one of those pictures you see on Facebook where somebody uh, turned up to the meeting as a potato and they, they did it like a Teams meeting. And I thought, you know what? That's what I need to do. Um, <laughs> you turned up as a pickle. So, yeah, I found I found out how they do that and, and I downloaded really... a thing and now I can be a pickle in, in meetings. It's and great. it was really funny, but we found the googly eyes, which is literally the best thing ever. And I swear to God, I had such a good abs workout from that because we were just sitting there going like googly eyes. And then five minutes later, I came back in and you were on your meeting and... And you were like, I'm a pickle, can't you tell because of the bumps? And you said that like six times and I was just like, what? <laughs> anyway, so we did that. Um, we played Cards Against Humanity with Kenda and Mike. Hi, Kenda and, Hi, Kenda Mike, and Mike. Over Zoom for Kenda's 30th birthday, which is really cool. Very nice. And we've been playing Dungeons and Dragons via Zoom with our good Dungeons and Dragon friend nerds, which has been lovely. Hello, Dungeons and Dragon Hi, nerds. Hi, guys. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Um, and we miss them. We miss you guys. I know. So um, and I have been doing handstand workshops, so I've been working on my handstands, mm-hmm. which has been really cool. And then I couldn't lift my arms above my head the next day, which is cool. I've been dancing, chair dancing, dancing with Noodle. Oh, he's a good lad. He is a good lad. He was chair dancing with me last night. And if you go onto my Instagram at Tree Frog Toe, you will see me chair dancing with Noodle hmm. and doing cool shoulder stands and things. And generally doing too much, which is what led to the yeast-based meltdown. So we have discovered that one of the things that Vicky does in times of crisis is she absolutely fills her calendar with all of the things. and For other people. For other people. And, and leaves no space whatsoever to sit down and do nothing. Yeah. Or, you know, go and look at the daffodils or sit on a tussock and enjoy the sunshine. And in all seriousness, I have... And it's kind of it kind of worked for a couple of weeks because mm. I got like I did loads and I you know I did I did do some good stuff and I was doing Zoom meetings for the neighbourhood and for the village and you know we're, was, we're, we're wardens for the village so we're doing shopping and we're yeah. running around and picking up prescriptions and doing things and, and I like doing that and I'm not certainly not going to stop doing that but then I was like I'm going to do all of the things for everybody all the time and I kind of forgot to look after me mm. and so um yeah that was that was a good lesson and you know we all kind of react to this differently and I I, I was probably stupid because I'm in a really fortunate position compared to a lot of people like okay so I've I've lost a big chunk of income and I'm running a business and blah blah but that's a risk you take when you run a business and I'm incredibly lucky that you know touch all of the wood your work and your business is okay at the moment and you know we've got all this outside space oh my god we've got so much space and I had money put aside for, you know, just such an eventuality because I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be on my last penny if something went wrong. So mm-hmm. it's, 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 I kind of feel like a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a dick being like, oh, I've been really stressed, but it is weird. It's just weird. It's a weird time. I mean, the whole, the whole, um, and I the, rules my friends. Of, the rules of the game have changed, haven't they? Everything has changed very quickly. Mm. It's very disturbing. It's very unusual. Nobody, none, well, certainly nobody I know has been through this kind of thing before. And yeah, it's, it's, it's upsetting. And I miss my friends and I'm worried about people that I love getting sick. And mm. do you know what I mean? So yeah. And, but also I can appreciate how very fortunate and privileged we are to live here and have what we've got. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, which is, I think partly why I wanted to help as many people as I could, because I feel like I'm just, otherwise I'm just a privileged dick in a office. <laughs> yeah. But at, but at some point when you are, and, and another thing you were doing as well was, was signing up to all of the online like fitness classes, which and are teaching, great. And teaching some. And well. teaching some. So you, on, which on... by the way is why I'm dressed as Mrs. Motivator. And I feel like I need to show you my outfit right now because it's to- totally amazing. I just need to swap the view so that I can, I can show you what I'm showing you. But okay, so I'm wearing like a day glow orange, no, yellow. Green. 
It's yellow. It's green. But my leggings are Cthulhu, like octopus leggings, and I feel like I feel like you need to see them in their full glory. I think I've got an octopus on my butt. In fact, have I got an octopus on my butt? I have got an octopus on my butt. So um, if you're listening to the audio of this, you can go and watch YouTube <laughs> and see an octopus on my butt. Um, but yeah, but but that's been great. I'm going to be fitter than I've ever been. Yes, but when you're when you're when you're Teaching a class at half seven in the morning, doing all of the things, doing a full day, running around for the neighbours, doing yeah, all right. of the nice things. And then, you know, I'm like, when can we have dinner? And you're like, well, I'll be finished by half past nine at night. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's... Um... It, all, it all exploded with the yeast. Yeah. The yeast was complicated and it was like, fuck this, I'm off. I noped out of the kitchen. I was, I was also super hungry, mm. which didn't help. Anyway, this is all about greed. And actually, maybe we can just tie this <laughs> tie this in. I was like being greedy about doing all of the things and making your life miserable, apparently. You weren't making my life miserable. <laughs> um, it was trying to do the best I could. <laughs> anyway, I've also been practicing my guitar every day, which is good. Have you? So, yeah. So um, anyway, so the seven deadly sins, number six... It's greed. And the punishment for, for greed, according to the Bible, is being boiled alive in oil. That doesn't sound good. It does not sound good. And also, it's like, how did they come up with these punishments? And why specifically? Maybe... I know. Hi, Jen. Well, hi, Jen. Jen wrote in with interesting information about the origins of the seven deadly sins. So, Jen, can you tell us why they came up with these punishments and what the logic was, <laughs> logic, what the logic was behind them? Well, maybe being... Um... Deep fat fried is, you know, that's a food thing. Well, no, we're talking greed for like wealth, power, status, because gluttony is greed for food, isn't it? Mm. Um, anyway, so greed, let's define greed. Greed is wanting or acquiring more than you need. And I would add also depriving others because I think it's really important to distinguish between greed and ambition. All right. Because, okay, so one of the other definitions of greed was like an insatiable longing for more power, wealth or status and never being satisfied. Mm -hmm. But actually, I think not being satisfied is a really useful thing when it comes to progress because dissatisfaction leads to progress and innovation. Yes. If nobody was ever dissatisfied, we would never have moved out of the caves. We'd all be, yeah, huddled around a fire in a cave. We would. Going, oh, isn't this fire nice? (laughs) But I think there's a big difference between a desire to improve and a desire to just own everything for the sake of it. Yes. And I think we're talking about the desire, greed is the desire to own everything for the sake of it. Does that make sense? It's not, yeah, not just owning stuff, but the, it's, the, it's the power and the... And depriving and the control. And there's a whole load of stuff that I think goes along with greed. When you say greedy, it conjures an image, doesn't it, of, of a type of, a certain type of... Um, yeah, I mean, I think in... White in, man. In the- <laughs> In, in modern parlance, it's kind of... Send me the hate mail. Not all men. Hashtag. Sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think in modern language, greed kind of is associated with food. But like you say, that's where, that's where the gluttony is, isn't it? Yeah, that's gluttony. So anyway, I'm going to segue this into the seven deadly sins of writing neatly. Um, this is all about writing a book. And in writing, I think that greed shows itself as chasing likes and shares and social media, instant gratification, validation. Not just social media, but that kind of, you know, you want comments on your articles and you want, um, book reviews and book reviews are really useful. And, you know, I've, I've, Last week's episode was an interview with <laughs> was an interview with Dan with Dan Laxton, who was all about how to get a thousand plus reviews on your Amazon products, which right. is because reviews are really, really useful, but you have to be chasing them for the right reasons and not just for the external validation. And I'll come to that in a second. So the yeah, greed, basically, when it comes to writing a book, is like that is really going after that. Um, it's that desire that will never be satisfied for external validation. Okay. From other people. And there are there are several problems with this. Would you like me to explain? Yes. Good. I feel so. like you have prepared for this and I am not. Yeah. Um so problem the first, you can't bank likes and shares. I don't know about your bank manager, but mine won't accept those things. That does not get your mortgage paid. Does not. Um likes and shares are mostly ego, although 
shares will introduce you to a wider audience, but it's only useful if you have a call to action that turns those likes and shares into new subscribers or new customers. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just instant gratification. It ignores the long game in favor of like the quick, shallow wins. If your likes and shares, if your if your comments, if you you know if your people saying oh I loved your book or oh I love this or oh I love that, if if that doesn't turn into sales or other meaningful relationship building with readers and clients, it's pointless. You are forgotten almost as quickly as they've clicked like because if you think how you use social media and you're probably the same and you're the same if you're listening, um, I you're probably similar to me. You like scroll through almost mindlessly. Mm-hmm. Every now and then you see something like um, baby goats in pajamas. And you click like, and you move on. I have no idea which page posted the goats in pajamas. Um, So, you know, I I, I don't know. And so you throw, you know, you throw a quick like at it. It's really rare that I click on something and spend enough time to decide that I want to go further and learn more about that person Mm -hmm. or the page. Does that make sense? Yes. So, and this type of greed for external validation, another problem, is really, really shallow because we end up putting... I was going to say our best face out there, but actually a face that we create for an audience that we think is going to, is going to like it. It's just going to, yeah. And so we're not real. And so we, and this is also a symptom, I think, of looking around at what everybody else is doing at like Instagram influencers and whatnot and going, oh, okay. So those people look like that. That means I have to look like that as well. Those people are saying that. That means I have to say that as well. It's, it's like, it's like the politician who rather than having an opinion and a viewpoint and, um, you know, something they want to achieve. Um, they just run a whole bunch of polls and start doing the popular stuff. Yes. And they should do polls. They should find out because before you can do stuff that is meaningful, you need to know what people want. And this is actually going off on a bit of a tangent. I was talking about this. Kevin interviewed me yesterday for um, his group. And we were talking about it's really important to distinguish between what people want and what people need because you have to sell them what they want and then give them what they need <laughs> because you can't, or well, you know, people need people need less sugar and you know more f- more healthy food. But if you try and sell people kale, they do not want they it. They do not want it. So you have to you have to sell people what they want and give them what they need. So that you know, there's, it's not stupid to do polls and things, but you can't just rely. That's the point. It's like there has to be a deeper layer beneath it. Hmm. So you've kind of just made a good point there. Kind of. Um, Anyway, yes, so we are kind of putting this persona on that we believe that will give us the best chance of attention and positive attention and, you know, and hope that people are going to pat us on the head and tell us we've done really well and that'll make us feel good. But the problem is it only makes us feel good for like five minutes Mm -hmm. because unless that validation comes from inside you, it doesn't, it's not real. And I am terrible for this. I'm like, really, I'm not sitting here and preaching at you about how, you know, external validation is terrible because I'm awful for this, aren't I? <laughs> I'm like, I thrive on external validation. Like, I really need, I need people's approval. I, I, it's, it's terrible. I'm constantly struggling against it. And it's a part, it's an aspect of my character that I hate. I really hate the fact that I need external approval because it's just, it's bullshit. <laughs> and so ultimately it's, it, your true validation has to come from within. It has to be an inner game. And as soon as you've got that nailed, the likes and shares and stuff from other people, it's fine. That's great. Then you can use it, but you must not use it as a form of validation for yourself and to make yourself feel worthy because it's it won't work. It's like trying to get... It's like, it's like always trying to seek approval from like a parent or um, a teacher who just is never going to... They're never going to approve of you, mm-hmm. you know? And... Like we were, when we were watching um, Sex Education and the lad who got expelled, whose dad was the head teacher, I forget yes. his name, and he's always seeking his father's approval and he's never going to get it. It's never going to happen because his father is an asshole. And yeah, it's just, and so for him to chase that as a form of validation is just pointless. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. And pointless. I, think, I think as well, it also devalues, if, if somebody... If somebody likes you, and whether that's like in the real sense of being, you know, a person, or whether it's like clicking a button on a, on a website somewhere, if somebody likes you, um, it's much more rewarding if they actually like you for something you stand for, something you believe, mm. something you're doing, something that you are. Yes, rather than rather what than you're doing, something you're projecting or something you're making up in order to make them like you. You know, yeah. it, it's it's a much more real thing if 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 they if they're you know, appealed, appealing, if they are drawn to the real you. Yeah? Yes. 
Exactly, yeah. And that's and we can tie that back to writing a book as well. And this is like you're not writing your book just to get likes and shares and appeal to a bunch of people that you think might be able to help you out in the future possibly. Mm-hmm. It's like what do you want your book to do for your reader and for you? And that's that's where the deeper message lies. It's like what what message have you got that can make a difference in somebody's life? and make a difference in your life. And that's what you put out there. It might not be the most popular opinion. It might not be the, the buzzword of the day. That doesn't matter. There might be other ways to make more people click the like button. Yeah. And even then, it's like, you know, this is about long-term, about long-term goals as well, because this isn't just about selling your books and getting those clicks. It's about growing your business in the long game. Mm-hmm. So I would much rather have 10 wonderful people do one of my courses and then send me a copy of their freshly written book afterwards than like a thousand people impulse by it and then do nothing with it Mm -hmm. for sure and you know that that to me is worth a lot more it's like yeah okay i might i might make like 10 times more money but i I would get a load of refund requests (laughs) because there would be buyer's remorse um and ultimately that kind of validation it means far less than the low numbers because i don't i don't care if a thousand people do my course if i don't get a thousand books sent to me afterwards then it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. Yeah, it hasn't worked for me. It hasn't worked for them. And it's ultimately, in the long run, it it means far less because those 10 people that do write their book and do the things that they can, you know, use their book to grow their business, they're going to tell more people and they're going to come back and buy more of my things because they know that I can get them results. Mm -hmm. Whereas those thousand people, if they just like, you know, if they're like, oh, I'm just going to do this and I'm not going to do it. they're just conned into clicking the button at 11 o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah, (laughs) then they're A, going to dislike me for coercing them or, you know, seemingly coercing them into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, B, not going to do anything with it. And they're never going to come back and buy anything from me again. Mm-hmm. And I'm not after just like a one-time buyer. I want people I want people for the rest of their life. You want a long relationship. <laughs> I do want a long relationship. Um, and it's probably time to wrap this shit up. So um, <laughs> what's this week's takeaway, Joe? Um, don't, don't chase after quantity. Go go for quality. I love how you try to. It's like written right in front of you. I know. I, I try, you I try desperately not to say what you've written. <laughs> but I'm a good writer, Joe. You could just say oh, what no, right. quality, not quantity. Go for the quality. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't be greedy for the shallow. Um, think about the long game, and remember that there is. Even though sometimes it's scary, especially now, it's like, oh, I just need to bring in as much money as possible. It's not going to serve you in the long run, probably. Mm. So. Think think about the long game. And stay safe out there, guys. Or maybe it's not possible to stay safe. Stay kind. Be kind. Be fucking kind to each other. Here's here's a parting shot. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of, like, I know that everyone's bored and everyone's stuck at home. And so busybodying on what other people are doing is, is, like, becoming a national pastime. But if you see somebody out there buying something that you think is non-essential, just spend a couple of seconds thinking about what their life might be like and whether or not it is essential to them. And also, if you see somebody has been in the supermarket twice in a week, maybe they're shopping for their neighbours, their elderly neighbours. Maybe they're an NHS volunteer. Hi, that's me. (laughs) Maybe they're doing stuff. You know, you don't know what's going on in people's lives. So unless there's like a group of people having a massive picnic in the park, in which case, you know, call the police on their asses, just be kind. Maybe spend a second and think, what are they doing actually? And is it it reasonable? Yeah, now is not the time for... um aggressive unpleasantness yeah and stay two meters away from people in supermarkets the number of people who have been like oh people are like pushing past me and stuff it's like just be a little bit patient don't have a go at like one of my friends was in the supermarket some bloke had a go at her because she was taking too long to choose from the shelf and it's like it's a one-way system you're gonna spend a bit longer choosing what you want and also don't be a dick <laughs> so, mind you he did not know who he was messing with ashley is not somebody to be messed with mm. <laughs> um anyway Next week, we'll be wrapping up the Seven Deadly Sins series, you'll be happy to know, with Wrath. Tune Wrath. in to find out how I'm going to um, twist rage into a podcast episode about writing a book. Okay. So many. Good so luck many. With that. No, it's easy. Super easy. Um, and the waiting list for my live um, blank page to book in 90 days course is going to be opening on May the 1st. The course starts on June the 1st, and you can join, you'll be able to join the waiting list. Um, on May the 1st I will be putting stuff out everywhere so if you're not already on my email list go to moxiebooks.co.uk and sign up for my daily emails 
I mean, you'll I'll let you know, know when the course is. The course is going to be fucking epic. We'll do a whole podcast episode in the next few weeks about what the course is going to be about. I'm really excited about it. Cool. Really excited. Um, if you listen to every episode, drop me an email with your postal address because I've got something silly to send you. <laughs> And if you've liked this podcast, if you didn't like this podcast, other podcasts are available. If you do like this podcast, please go and subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. We do like a good review. We do like a good review. And rate us. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Or however many stars that you think we deserve, but obviously that's five. It's not five stars. Why are you still here? Yeah. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you to anybody who is an NHS worker or a key worker or a cleaner or a bin man or a hospital anybody or a postie, or a postie. Oh, i fucking love our postman he's great hi colin hi colin <laughs> um and just people who are volunteering and people who are still keeping the wheels turning and harriet for being my amazing assistant um we love you so much harriet and we would have been coming to see you in a couple of weeks and that's not happening now obviously mm-hmm. um and thank you to podfly as well um really really thank you to podfly because they're still working and i'm just quickly opening my email just yeah i think i think really the it, it's it's hard for the people who are just like sitting around waiting for this to be over and it's terrible for the people who've lost their jobs um but there's a lot of people working hard out there in in reasonably risky situations and they are like i say they're keeping the world turning yeah you know they're keeping economies alive and they're, they're doing hard difficult things yeah they are and i wanted to give a special shout out to Anne from podfly um, who sent me an email in response to one of our episodes because she's one of she's the writer for our podcast show, so mm-hmm. she does the show the show notes and stuff like that. And she just wanted she just sent an email just to check in and see how we're doing and hoping that we're safe from all the virus stuff at the Dingle and you know because she listens to all the episodes. <laughs> um, she's in Costa Rica and they're on lockdown and just wanted to check in and make sure us and the sheep are doing okay. <laughs> and that just like like literally made me cry because Aww. it's just so lovely. And I am um, like we went to Costa Rica on our honeymoon and I'm determined to go like we're fucking going back there next year now. And okay. we're gonna go and look up Anne from Podfly, whether you like it or not Anne, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and yeah, and just thank you for carrying on doing an amazing job of our podcast. Yeah, they do really good work. We'll be back same time next week. Thank you so much for listening to our ramblings and watching our ramblings if you're on YouTube. Um, Tune in next week for a new exciting hair colour. Yeah, oh yeah, because it will be a new hair colour, yeah. What, what colour is Joe's hair going to be? Place your bets now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm-hmm.